In this video, I'm going to go over using overlays in MRI Chrome. And this video will be geared towards advanced students or researchers who are using MRI Chrome as a tool for studying the brain. So first, go into the MRI Chrome Workshop Materials folder. You'll see the link in the description if you have not downloaded it already. And I'm going to be using the MRI Cron Windows version that I have downloaded here. And you can follow along with whatever version that you have for your computer. And when I open MRI Cron, it opens up the image that I had uh, loaded when I closed it. So I'm going to start out by opening a standard brain. So go to File, Open Templates, and I'm going to use the CH2 Better Brain, which is a good a standard m and space brain uh, for us to work with. So the first thing I want to do is overlay a functional cluster on top of this standard brain. And so go to Overlay, Add, and within the Examples folder, I'm going to select this cluster file right here. This is just a functional cluster that I've identified for, as an example. And we can set the left click on the Auto Contrast button to see this cluster more clearly. Let's say we want to identify what part of the brain is this cluster associated with. And so given that, uh, you, let's say you don't have any um, prior anatomical knowledge, what you can do is use a standard brain atlas to identify what brain regions are associated with this cluster. And what I'm going to do is open another MRI crown window. So I'm going to right click down here at the bottom and select MRI cron. And this actually opens to a default anatomical atlas that comes with MRI cron. So for you to open this, go to File, Open Templates, and this is the AAL atlas, the automatic anatomical labeling atlas that comes with MRI Cron. Other atlases that might be useful are the Harvard Oxford Atlas. This also comes with MRI Cron. You can select that. And there's also the uh, Broadman's Area Atlas that comes with MRI Cron. And so those three are the most useful for determining brain region, which brain region is associated with, uh, say, a, a functional cluster that you're interested in. And so let's go and uh, open the AAL atlas and navigate to the cluster that we're interested in. And so this is, uh, uh, so here on the left, I'm just navigating to the cluster and clicking on it. One thing to note is that you need to make sure that these two windows are yoked. Uh, as you click in a coordinate in one window, it should jump to that coordinate in the other window if they're both yoked. So go to View and make sure yoke is checked in both windows. Another thing to keep in mind is you can open additional windows. So if I want to right click and go to MRI Cron again, you can have two atlases open. So if I want to open the Harvard Oxford Atlas as well, you can have both of these open at, this, uh, at the same time. And so let's say I want to again navigate to this cluster. You can see how the region is defined in the AAL Atlas. Up here at the top, it's the left inferior temporal gyrus. And in the Harvard Oxford Atlas, the same coordinate is defined as the left inferior temporal gyrus, the temporal occipital part. And so now you can click on different voxels of the cluster you're interested in and see what parts of the brain are associated with it. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. Another way is actually to overlay the volume on the atlas itself. So when you have the underlying image as the atlas, you can go to Overlay, Add, and we can select this cluster, and we can see it show up here. Okay. If you have any issues viewing the cluster, go to Overlay, Transparency on Background, and make sure it's set to 0% opaque. If you want to see the underlying image as well, you can change this parameter to make it a little bit more transparent, so say 50%, and so now you can see the underlying image, in this case the atlas, a little bit more clearly. You can see that this portion of the cluster is in the left middle temporal gyrus, and this portion of the cluster is in the left inferior temporal gyrus. 
So another thing you can do in terms of overlaying a functional cluster on the atlas is to mask out all other regions to make it easier to see which parts of the brain are associated with a cluster. To do this, instead of using overlay, go to draw, open VOI, and select the uh, neuroimaging format, and select the cluster in our workshop materials example folder. Click open, and make sure that the transparency on background is set to opaque so you can more clearly see it. And what you can do is go to draw, mask image with VOI, and preserve regions within VOI to get rid of all other parts of the brain. And so now when you go to draw, close VOI, what you see is uh, only the brain regions associated with your particular cluster. So you can click around on these different colors to identify, you know, the, say the left middle temporal gyrus, the uh, left inferior temporal gyrus, and a little bit here in the black of the left fusiform. Okay, so those are the only three regions that we can see. And so this is just one kind of tricky way to more you know, quickly identify what regions are associated with your cluster. But make sure not to save the, this underlying file, otherwise you might overwrite the, in this case, the AAL atlas. Okay, so finally I want to show you the materials that come with the workshop uh, materials that you've downloaded. And so we can go to File, Open, and we can navigate to these re this Research Atlases folder. And we can see that I've already put the AAL3 atlas, which is a more updated version of the AAL atlas. And so here are different file options for you. And so you can select this atlas uh, if you want to use the more updated version. If you want to use the Harvard-Oxford atlas, and so you can go to Open, and I'm going to uh, selecting the cortical and subcortical map. And this 25 means the probability that the, uh, the tissue within a given voxel is gray matter, so has cell bodies in it. This threshold of zero means that it's in all the brains used to develop this atlas, that tissue was gray matter. And when it's 25, it just means 75% of the time that voxel was identified as gray matter versus, say, cerebral spinal fluid or white matter. Selecting that and opening it. And this atlas doesn't have labels associated with it in terms of names, but it does have numbers. And if you open the Atlas Regions Excel spreadsheet that is within the Workshop Materials Research Atlases folder, uh, I've listed the names associated with each of these numbers. So say uh, Region 9 is the Hippocampus. And so you can navigate to the hippocampus here. And you can see that it's nine on uh, the right and left hemisphere. And if you want to see these colors a little more clearly, you can change the scale to, say, spectrum. And so now you can see them more clearly. And you can play with the minimum and maximum intensity values to um, see if you uh, to see these more clearly. If you focus on intensity values closer to the value of interest, in this case the hippocampus is 9, and now we're treating it between 5 and 20, we can see it more clearly and uh, dissociate it from the amygdala, which is 10. Okay? So that's just a way to kind of play around the intensity values and color scales to see these regions more clearly. While we're here, I can show you quickly how to draw a volume of interest, also called a region of interest, that encompasses, uh, say, in this case, the right hippocampus. So you can use the 3D bubble tool. I'm just going to left click on it and change the, keep the difference from origin to one, difference from edge to, to one, and make sure the radius of this bubble is larger than the hippocampus itself. And uh, you can click the zero intensity constrains the edge and you can click apply. Okay, so now we have a region that's drawn within the hippocampus. And it still has this edge around it. And let me, I can zoom in so that it fits and zoom in times two so you can see that more clearly. 
And to fill it out to, to encompass the entire hippocampus, go to Draw, Advanced, and Dilate Drawings. And so now it encompasses the entire hippocampus. You can have it temporarily disappear by left clicking on this wizard's hat up here at the top. So now we have a nice hippocampus region of interest, uh, also called volume of interest. And we can go to Draw, Save the OI to save that as I'm going to save it into my examples folder. I'm just called campus. And I like to save things in the nifty file format. So save that. OK. And draw, close the OI to get rid of it. So we've gone over how to use atlases to identify brain regions and how to use atlases that I've included in these materials. You can. Um, Use these concepts for whatever atlas, standard atlas that you work with. As long as it's in a nifty file format, you can load it up into MRI Chrome.